Nadia Comaneci confirms what we knew all along. Eastern Europe dominated gymnastics in the 70s and 80s thanks to athleticism, discipline, and performance of its athletes. One in particular has made her mark in sports history, becoming the first and youngest gymnast to score a perfect 10, a score that at the time was considered unachievable. The Romanian teenager who achieved this is Nadia Comaneci. She's indeed a legend in gymnastics, and while many stories have been told about her, there are many stories that have remained under the radar until now. Nadia Comaneci confirms what we knew all along. Birth of a Star Athlete Nadia Elena Comaneci was born in the small town of Anesti, located in the Carpathian Mountains in Romania. She was an active child who was full of excess energy that had to be managed. To help ensure that her energy is focused on creative endeavors, Comaneci's mother signed her daughter up for gymnastics lessons. It wasn't long before her talents shone through. When she was six, she attended an experimental school for gymnastics ran by the legendary coach Bella Carolli. Carolli personally chose Comaneci when he saw her turning cartwheels at school. In 1969, when she was about seven to eight years old, she began competing for championships. She placed 13th in the competition, but that only served to inspire her to work harder. Just a year later, she won the Romanian Nationals, becoming the youngest to do so. Comaneci's performance was the product of her innate talent and the discipline and training she received under Carolli's guidance. She trained every day, with each session lasting three hours. Carolli knew he had a star in his hands and gave his student one-on-one -on -one coaching. The Golden Girl By 1975, Comaneci was ready for the big time. Carolli had confidence in his pupil and knew that with her skills and talent, she could easily outshine older competitors, and he was right. Comaneci took home five medals through her outstanding performance at the European Championship and U.S. Tandem Cup. It was time to aim for the Olympics, specifically the 1976 Montreal Olympics. A meeting But first, she had to compete at the American Cup inaugural edition, March 1976. Comaneci was just 14 years old at Madison Square Garden when she won a silver cup. It was also at this event where she met a man who would play a significant role in her life later. Bart Connor, an American gymnast, also won a silver cup. He had just turned 18 and he was asked to pose with Comaneci for photos. One of the photographers urged Connor to kiss Comaneci on the cheek. He did so and the kiss was captured on camera. And then came the Olympics. In July of 1976, Comaneci took off like a rocket, showing excellently in event after event. Prior to Comaneci's performance at the 1976 Olympics, no one had ever received a perfect 10 before which was why the scoreboards only displayed three digits. At high scores, a gymnast may receive a rating of 9.50 or a 9.95, for example, which was why, when Comaneci's perfect 10 was displayed, it appeared as a 1.0. She was perplexed as to why the rating was so low until she realized that she had just scored the world's first perfect 10 in gymnastics. This meant that she received no deductions because her routine was simply flawless. The crowd erupted into loud cheers and a rare smile crossed Comaneci's otherwise serious face. It was history in the making, but it wasn't enough. She went on to score not another one or two perfect tens, but an additional six. A Song for Nadia Comaneci's outstanding and unprecedented performance was played and replayed on TV, making her a worldwide star. Clips of her historic routine was played on ABC's Wide World of Sports, with the most important moments played in slow motion. The theme song titled Cotton's Dream, originally from the film Bless the Beasts and the Children, accompanied the clips. The clips were replayed over and over again for so many times that the composers of the song, Barry Devorsen and Perry Potkin Jr., decided to rename the accompanying music Nadia's Theme. Worldwide Fame Comaneci became the world's darling almost overnight. The world was in love with the petite Romanian girl, and little girls everywhere aspired to be her. In the same year, the BBC awarded her the Overseas Sports Personality and Female Athlete of the Year title, and she appeared on the cover of Time magazine with the title She's Perfect. As a champion returning home, Comaneci received the honors she deserved and was granted accolades and gifts by the Romanian government. But her success was threatened by personal issues at home. 
changes. At the time when Komenichi was enjoying worldwide attention and respect as a gymnast, her parents were undergoing difficulties with their marriage. Eventually, her parents divorced, and this affected the young gymnast in the most profound way. Komenichi's mental anguish was getting the best of her. The pressure of fame, along with ensuring that her next performance should be either as good or better than the last, took a toll on her. There were also changes in the way she trained, as the Romanian Gymnastic Federation decided to change her trainers and add her pack up for Bucharest. Komenichi was unhappy about the changes, and coupled with the sadness brought about by her parents' divorce, she reached a low point in her young life and attempted suicide. Fortunately, she was unsuccessful, and the Romanian authorities decided to let her train under Cariolia again. The semblance of normality helped stabilize Komenichi a bit. Growing up In gymnastics, some of the best performers are small, petite girls. But young girls do not stay young forever. During the interim period between the 1976 Olympics and the next Olympiad, Komenichi went through puberty. Two years after her triumph at the Olympics, she competed at the Strasbourg World Championships. Her physical changes were apparent. She had grown 7 inches taller and gained 21 pounds. Although she finished fourth place at the uneven bars, she did win gold on the beam and silver on the vault. In 1979, Komenichi conquered the European All-Around Championship for the third time, becoming the first ever gymnast to do so. She also led the competition at the World Championships in 1979. She could not compete for the team competition because her grip buckle had cut her wrist, which led to blood poisoning, for which she was hospitalized. She defied her doctor's orders and competed anyway, scoring a 9.95 on the beam. This won Romania, their first gold medal in team competition. Komenichi participated in the 1980 Moscow Olympics. That year, the U.S. opted to boycott the Olympics to protest the invasion of Afghanistan by the Soviet Union. Komenichi won a gold medal for the floor exercise and another for the balance beam. She also took home two silver medals. Karoli, her coach, protested the scoring, insisting that the scores given to Komenichi were unfair. The protests were shown on TV, and the Romanian government felt it was an embarrassment to the country. From then on, Karoli lived under surveillance of the authorities, making his life difficult. Nadia, 81 to promote goodwill and show off their best athletes, the Gymnastics Federation launched a tour to be done in the U.S. It was called Nadia 81, and it would include the Karolis. The Romanian gymnasts rode on the same bus as the American gymnasts, and it was here where Komenichi met Connor for the third time. During the tour, Karoli secretly hinted to Komenichi that he intended to defect, along with his wife, and Geza Pozar, the team choreographer. He also asked her indirectly if she wanted to leave Romania permanently. Komenichi refused because she simply wanted to go home. The defection of the Romanian coaches triggered the Romanian authorities to turn their focus on Komenichi. Even after she came home, she was viewed with suspicion, with authorities believing she would defect as well. As a result, her movement was monitored and she could no longer travel to other countries. She was allowed to travel to Los Angeles for the 1984 Olympics, but only as an observer. There, she watched as Karolgi's American protege, Mary Lou Retton, dominated gymnastics. She couldn't talk to Karolgi because she was being watched. In the same year, Komenichi officially retired. The retirement ceremony was performed in Bucharest. The International Olympic Committee chairman attended the event. Although Komenichi expected her eventual retirement, she didn't expect what would come after. She still couldn't travel and could not earn as much as she could. She felt that since she was no longer viewed as an asset, the Romanian government didn't have to keep her happy. It was then that she thought of defecting to the U.S. Leaving Romania Komenichi got in touch with a Romanian defector named Constantine Penalt, who helped guide her escape from her country. She did not inform her parents, but told her brother, who was supportive of her move. Just a few weeks prior to the Romanian Revolution, Komenichi reached the Romania-Hungary border on November 27, 1989. Although she was recognized by the Hungarian border guards, they let her through, and she, along with other Romanian defectors, finally took a plane for the U.S. Prisoner in a Free Country He might have saved her by helping her defect, but Penalt was far from being a good friend. Komenichi later recounted how he kept her isolated from friends and family prohibited her from contacting other people, and kept her locked in hotel rooms during tours. Worst, he also physically abused her 
and took money worth around $150,000 she earned from magazine and TV interviews, then returned to Romania with his wife. Comaneci did not report him because she didn't know any better. She'd grown up in a communist country where she didn't fully recognize what her rights were. She felt that he was her lifeline to America. Fortunately, on a trip to Montreal, Comaneci met another Romanian, Alexandru Stefu. Penalt was scared of Stefu and decided to flee. Starting a new life In 1991, Comaneci moved to Oklahoma, where she stayed with gymnastics coach Paul Zert, who later became her manager. Her friend, Bart Connor, had started a gymnastics school and she came to help him. Their friendship soon blossomed into a romance and they became engaged after four years of being together. Beginning in 1994, Comaneci headed the Nadia Comaneci International Invitational, a competition where gymnasts from USAG Level 4 up to Level 10 participated in. The Invitational also began to host elite competition for international athletes. Life with Bart In 1996, Comaneci and Connor flew to her home in Romania for their wedding. Romania was by then a capitalist country, something that made possible by the fall of communism. Comaneci was given a hero's welcome, and the wedding reception was even held in the presidential palace. Life with Connor helped Comaneci find her perfect work-life balance, and she adjusted marvelously to her new home. In 2001, she received her U.S. citizenship, which she holds along with her Romanian citizenship. She and Connor also started a family when their son Dylan was born in 2006. Comaneci also achieved another first becoming the first athlete to speak at the Independence Day Naturalization Ceremony in 2012. In 2017, she was honored in Montreal with an area named Place Nadia Comaneci at the Olympic Park. Forever Olympian Nadia Comaneci will forever be one of the world's most famous gymnasts. She not only serves as the Romanian Sports Ambassador and Romanian Gymnastics Federation Honorary President, but she's also the Romanian Olympic Committee Honorary President. With her husband, she also owns the Perfect 10 Production Company and the Bart Connor Gymnastics Academy. They've also opened several shops offering sports equipment. In the 2012 London Olympics, Comaneci had the honor of carrying the Olympic torch with John Amici. She also provided commentaries and analyses for gymnastics events during the Olympics. Comaneci appeared in ads and has helped raise funds for several charities. She funded the Nadia Comaneci Children's Clinic in Romania and helps oversee its operation. The clinic offers social and medical support to Romanian children for free or at a low cost. She and Connor also offer their support to the Special Olympics. Comaneci's skills as a gymnast is well known and highly respected. She's not only innovative and showed a clean technique, but was also capable of difficult original skills. She also kept calm even during high-pressure performances. In honor of her athleticism, two uneven bar skills are included in the gymnastics code of points. These are the Comaneci Dismount and the Comaneci Salto. With her achievements, work ethic, and personal resilience, Nadia Comaneci truly is a real legend.